We start in Edmonton where Prime Minister Justin Trudeau announced millions of dollars today to help the city build more housing. But the provincial government was nowhere to be seen. Trudeau was asked about the absence. The mayor has been leading on this, uh, you know, and calling for a trilateral meeting between the federal government, the municipality, and the province. We know everyone has a role to play. The federal government will be there. The municipality is there. We need the province to make sure it's keeping, stepping up uh, to help the most vulnerable people uh, reach home. For the province's response, I'm joined now by Alberta's Minister of Seniors, Community, and Social Services, Jason Nixon. Minister Nixon, welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me on. Uh, normally, when a prime minister comes to a province with tens of millions of dollars for housing, people are happy. But you're upset about this today. What, what's the issue? Well, we're happy to see the government investing in uh, the federal government investing in our province when it comes to housing. We're, we're frustrated because one, uh, it's not enough. We continue to be shortchanged in this province when compared to other uh, jurisdictions. And second, it's clear that Justin Trudeau's government continues to want to work without the province. Uh, and that's that's frustrating. Uh, and I think it's very frustrating for Albertans who need us to be tackling this serious housing crisis that's been created by the federal government in a significant way. But we can't do that in a cooperative way with the federal government. If they won't even talk to us again. As I said earlier today. Sneaking into town at night without telling the province what's going on, uh, and then leaving, and then having the nerve to tell TV cameras that you're somehow trying to work with the province when nothing could be further from the truth. Uh, clearly, based on the fact that you don't even have the province at your announcement. But shortchanged how? Uh, th these are these are deals that are done with municipalities uh, in return for speeding up zoning laws. I know you're talking about per capita funding, but the whole point of the housing accelerator is to incentivize municipalities to change rules. And if, if you take that away and just give it to them on per capita, where goes the incentive to change zoning laws? Well, to be clear, I'm talking per capita by province. I do think that we agree with the federal government on the need to reduce red tape. The, our province has been doing that in a significant way, and we do support Minister Fraser's efforts to do that across the country. Uh, but when we say per capita, we want to make sure that Alberta and all of our cities are receiving uh, the same funding as you see in places like Quebec or Vancouver uh, or BC. Uh, so let's just take the accelerated program as an example. And it's just one example of housing spending that's taking place in Canada right now. Uh, by our math, the, with this latest announcement, the federal government government still short about $100 million. And I will point out, as you know, that both of uh, our largest city's mayors have joined me in that call to make sure that the federal government actually invests in Alberta uh, it, it, on a per capita way in the same way that you see taking place as, uh, in other provinces. And the other thing that concerns us very much, and we've raised this with Minister Fraser, and I have some hope that this will be addressed, is that this continues to only be also Edmonton and Calgary. And in our province, we have to do tremendous amount of work when it comes to what I call the donut cities, but those would be cities around our, our two largest cities, so places like Airdrie or Okotoks or Leduc up here in Edmonton where I'm at right now, uh, and this, all these announcements are sorely not getting to those areas which we need to see significant investment in. But the main point is this, the Prime Minister says he wants to work with us. We've been reaching out to the federal government to do a pretty significant housing deal similar to what you see in BC and Quebec. Uh, and it, crickets. Uh, we hear that they may eventually come to the table. The Prime Minister indicated that today. But for him to look at the cameras and say with a straight face that he's working with this province uh, when he doesn't even let us know he's in town and is continuing to uh, refuse to do a housing deal inside Alberta uh, is ridiculous. Well, do you think any of that is, is sort of, you know, we've had Premier Daniel Smith on this show many times. She has called Stephen Gilbo a menace. She called for him to be fired. She's attacked the federal government policies on any number of issues. Uh, I mean, is there not a two way street on this, Minister? Well, Stephen Gabo is a menace. He's continued to move forward with multiple unconstitutional policies that have been torn down by the Supreme Court, and I suspect that multiple more will be torn down. That's another example of why it's outrageous that the Prime Minister would come to Alberta and did not even bother to inform the Premier that he was here uh, and sit down and talk about those important issues. But Albertans and Canadians need us to put this all aside. And so for me, this is not a partisan issue. Our job is to handle the biggest crisis of our time, which is housing. It's created by this federal Liberal government, but we could put that behind us and instead come to the table and have a meaningful work to be able to create more doors for Albertans and Canadians. And right now, from what I see from this Prime Minister and his government, they have no intention of working with Alberta in a meaningful way. Uh, we'll continue to call upon them to do so, uh, and we are prepared to continue to put big money in when it comes to housing in Alberta. Uh, but we need the Alberta go or the federal government to show up uh, and participate uh, and not continue to come here and have press conferences with uh, hollow announcements. Uh, how is the housing problem created exclusively by, by the federal government? I mean, they're not the reason there's been restrictive zones laws. There's, they're not the reason there's been slow municipal permit approvals. They're not the reason uh, provincial governments ha have increased their land development costs in a lot of places. There, there's a myriad of factors there. I mean, how can you say this is entirely the federal government's fault? 
Well, it's not entirely the federal government's fault, but they're the majority uh, where the fault lands. How I mean, are they Justin the Trudeau has brought forward policies that have created an inflationary crisis, made the cost of living uh, extraordinarily hard for uh, all Canadians. But further than that, what he has done and his government did was stop actually working with the province of Alberta, for example, when it came to things like CMHC funding over the last several years. Uh, which has taken our uh, situation in Alberta uh, from being short 20,000 houses to being short between 130 and 150,000 houses over the next five years, directly as a result of the federal government's decision at one point not to even participate uh, in dealing with things like affordable housing uh, in Alberta. So, you know, here's their opportunity. They say they want to work with our province. We're here. We're spending $9 billion with our partners over the next four or five years to create 13,000 more units of affordable housing. My department with our partners has already created almost 5,000 new units since 2019. Uh, and we're going to continue to work on that with or without the federal government. Uh, but if they want to participate, they need to come here and get to work and stop flying over uh, and ignoring the province uh, and actually get to work in a meaningful way for Canadians. Okay, well, you heard what the Prime Minister said there today, uh, Minister, that uh, they did go there and get to work on, on child care deals to try to get things down to a $10 a day child care average. And the Prime Minister repeated what I've heard from Jenna Suds, who's now the minister responsible for that file, that your government is sitting on the money the federal government gave you uh, to, to build this program to lower costs and haven't put your own money into this. So you want them to work with you, but their argument is that on something as essential as affordable child care, you haven't really been living up to your end of the bargain on that arrangement. Well, the Premier in the last several days has made some adjustments to our processes here in Alberta to make sure that money can come into play uh, and has, has addressed that. But again, I will submit to you, this is an example of showing that the Prime Minister clearly doesn't want to work with us on housing. Because when he said that, he was asked a direct question about working with us on housing. Uh, and he chose to pivot to daycare, uh, which is a very important issue and a fair thing to bring up. But it shows that he has absolutely nothing to deliver for the people of Alberta when it comes to housing. Right, but, but on that, I mean, it, maybe there is a lack of trust, Minister, that it took this long. I mean, the, the child care deal was signed a long time ago, right? It's not like this was signed six weeks ago. Well, if we want to talk about lack of trust, we've had a federal government uh, who's been working overtime to destroy the largest industry in this country and the largest industry in our province, has lost multiple times now the Supreme Court for measures that they've done. Uh, and certainly we don't trust them. That aside, we need to put that uh, to the side and we need to get to work on creating doors. And Alberta's government has been clear to the federal government. We are already investing in significant ways and we're prepared to invest even more in a partnership with them. But they got to stop ignoring uh, us and start supporting us the same way that we see in places like BC or Quebec, where strangely it appears uh, that the federal government is focused more on votes. Uh, and, and that is unfortunate because this issue is an important issue to every province, and we have to do everything we can to be able to create housing from coast to coast. And I have to point out, Alberta is the largest growing place in the country uh, and is disproportionately taking uh, more people into Alberta right now because of the affordability crisis that you see in places like Toronto or Vancouver. So it's very important that the federal government gets to work with us and, and puts uh, aside uh, their partisan issues and creates more houses for Canadians. You, you referenced the, the working with British Columbia. We, we saw the Prime Minister there with Premier Eby announcing uh, $2 billion in federal seed capital for the BC Builds program. That was something that was already in place that they came in afterwards. I, I know you suggested to, in your letter to Sean Fraser, the federal housing minister, that you want to work with them on something like this. I, I mean, what's stopping you from building it and then inviting them in? Like, how, like I, know, I accept there's a lack of trust. We see it all the time. We've talked about it on this program many times. But there is a shared interest in getting houses for Canadians. So how do you move past this now, uh, Minister, uh, now that everyone is sort of like taking shots at each other today? Well, we have similar programs to what's taking place in BC and other mechanisms that we could do, I think, to amplify what's taking place in BC here in Alberta. And we are open uh, to a deal. I made that clear to Mr. Fraser a, a couple weeks ago in a very productive bilateral meeting uh, in, in Calgary. We need a little more detail on what actually uh, has taken place in BC to fully answer that question. But we are the door is wide open for that conversation that's made as has been made clear. But I'll also be clear, it's also been made clear for about a year uh, to the federal government that Alberta wants to invest in partnership with them uh, when it comes to housing. And we have not ha seen any significant movement from the federal government. And why you see frustration in Alberta today is the Prime Minister, the leader of the country, flew into Edmonton, Alberta, and said that Alberta does not want to work on housing and that they need us to come to the table. And we have been at the table. And what really needs to happen is we need the Prime Minister's cabinet to show up and get to work work with Alberta to solve this problem for our province. Okay, uh, just as a, a final point on, on another topic, in a little over two hours or so from now, Premier Smith is going to speak to the province. She's bought airtime uh, on the private networks out there. Uh, 
what I, I don't know how much how willing you are to scoop your boss, but what can we expect to hear from the premier tonight? It, it's going to be a conversation about financial choices and the financial situation. Where's this going to go? Well, I'm not going to scoop the premier because I think that's probably a bad career move. But what I will say is what I, th I think you will see from Premier Smith is what you see often when she's out addressing our province is a clear vision for where our province needs to go, uh, lay out uh, what the challenges that we have as a province, but also the successes that we've had here in Alberta and lay out a clear vision for Albertans where we have to, have to head next. Alberta Minister of Seniors, Community and Social Services still in that job because he didn't scoop his boss. Jason Nixon, thank you for joining me today. Appreciate it.